So welcome everyone. Um, this is our PharmD Spring uh, 2022 alumni student panel. Uh, my name is Erica Estes. I am the director of the PharmD program and we're really excited um, to have this event tonight. It's something that we do every semester. Um, this one has a little bit of a different spin in that we have students and um, alumni participating. Um, we have a lot of people joining us from different backgrounds. I'm not really sure exactly where you're all from. If you want to kind of throw that in the chat so we have a sense of who's on. We have possibly some admitted students into our class of Race Yourself 2028. Super exciting. Um, and then John just said, ooh. And then <laughs> we have some of our current students on. Thank you for attending and maybe some alum. Um, and possibly just some prospective students who are interested in the College of Pharmacy. Um, so tonight's panel highlights um, several students and alumni um, of URI College of Pharmacy from our PharmD program, working in very specific um, pharmacist, pharmacy student roles. Um, and that's within long-term care, community pharmacy and hospital. Um, so we have a really great career exploration panel through URI College of Pharmacy, the link is in the chat. So all of our featured panelists, our pharmacists um, have been interviewed and there'll be some interviews that you can view more in more detail on them, as well as um, several other careers and alumni from our program. If you're interested in learning more about the possible um, career paths um, that, and things that you can do with your PharmD degree. Um, so a couple of housekeeping things. Um, you're, like I said, welcome to ask questions in the chat. I'll be moderating the chat. There's some students on too that might jump in and answer some questions. Um, we um, will have additional opportunities at the end, like I said, if you want to unmute or, you know, put your camera on at that point, we are recording it, um, so just be aware of that. Um, and then tonight's panel, just a quick introduction, I'll turn it over to our moderator. So we have, as you can see, six representatives from URI College of Pharmacy. So Caitlin Burton is one of our P4 students graduating in a couple of weeks. Um, she's doing double duty tonight as a panelist and as a moderator. If you've attended any of our events, and I recognize some of your names, um, so I know that many of you have, there's a good chance you've already met Caitlin at one of our um, Zoom events in the past year or two, and they've been on, on Zoom, but also in person doing um, tours in Avedesian Hall. Um, she's very skilled at doing the online Zoom tours as well. Um, Caitlin is very well prepared to moderate this event. She loves to talk about anything from France to vaccinations and really anything in between. Um, so I will turn it over to her to kick off the panel. Thank you, Dr. S. So yeah, so like she mentioned, my name is Caitlin. Um, it is so nice to see all of you here. I'm so glad that you guys were able to take time out of your busy schedules to join us. Um, pharmacy school is my life, my whole life. So I love talking about it as do the rest of our students here. Um, but like I said, my name is Caitlin. I did um, come to URI all the way from O'Fallon, Illinois. So down in Southern Illinois, 17 hours away, just because of how much I loved URI's program. Um, so speaking about it and sharing it with others is definitely a true passion of mine. Um, so I am a PharmD as sure. So I did two degrees during my time here. Um, and I also got a bio minor. So I will be coming back again to talk a little bit more about my time here. I'm going to go ahead and pass off to one of our first panelists, um, Dr. Maura Elbridge, if she wants to go ahead and introduce herself. Sure, thank you, Caitlin. So my name is Maura Eldridge. I am class of 2010 at URI. Um, I really enjoyed my time at URI. I came similar to Caitlin, the reputation. I am from New England, not Rhode Island specifically, but the reputation really brought me there. And then when I got there, I never wanted to leave. So um, graduated in 2010, found long-term care. I currently work for um, Omnicare, a CVS health company, and I'm currently a clinical manager managing uh, all of New England and New York. Hi, um, I'm Stephanie. So I am a P3, which means that I am in my fifth out of sixth year of pharmacy school. Um, I'm from Coventry, Rhode Island, so Rhode Island native. So I knew a lot about URI um, before even coming here, just when I was in high school and growing up in the area. Um, I have seriously loved my time at URI. I feel like I've learned so much. I've made so many great connections. Um, one of the greatest connections I think I've made is my um, connections with Omnicare. Um, I really have enjoyed being an intern for them and specifically working in the IV department has really like sharpened my skills as a student. So I'm excited to be here, excited to talk to you guys about it. 
Good evening. My name is Drew Ross. I am the manager of pharmacy at South County Health. So for those of you at URI, I'm right up the road. Um, I'm originally from Massachusetts. I knew I wanted to do pharmacy and I knew I wanted to stay at least somewhat regionally local. Uh, you know, I like to call myself an honorary Rhode Islander. My mom and dad were both uh, Rhode Island born and bred and I was born in Rhode Island, even though I lived in Massachusetts. And then I married a Rhode Island girl, got a Rhode Island job and have a nice Rhode Island home now too in Cranston. I uh, have worked in hospital pharmacy. I started as a P2 working in hospital pharmacy. My first job out of school was at a hospital and I am still in a hospital. I've had a few different roles. Uh, so I'm really excited to talk to you all about that. And I'll pass the torch over to Gabby. Hi everyone, my name is Gabby Minosa. I'm a current P1 pharmacy student at URI. So that means I'm in my third year out of six. And it's my first year in the professional portion of the program, which is really exciting. Um, I'm from Hamden, Connecticut. So not too far away from Rhode Island. What really drew me to URI as a whole was, I mean, their amazing faculty, staff, location and facilities. I personally really like that we have uh, simulation suites and labs because you get to see what it's like to be a hospital pharmacist and get that hands-on work with um, practice patients and everything. And that's why I'm really excited that this year I got hired at South County Hospital. And I currently work there with Drew. Um, I'm a pharmacy intern and I've learned so much so far. I really have always envisioned myself being a hospital pharmacist. and I can't wait to continue to learn and grow um, at, at my place of work. Hi everyone, my name's John. I graduated from URI in 2019, um, which is pretty recent, but feels like eons ago. Um, I currently am the pharmacy manager at Greenline Apothecary's Providence location. Um, so I'm living up in Providence right now. And URI uh, was really awesome, very special place, very special time in my life. Um, and I chose that school for financial aid reasons, and, uh, I honestly didn't really like the campus when I first got there, but it was like a weird falling in love, uh, <laughs> thing happening. Um, so yeah, I'm a New Yorker, but now I'm also kind of like a pseudo Rhode Islander. I've been here ever since I started school, um, and I'm happy to be here tonight. Thanks for having me. Thank you, everyone. So just about me, um, I am right on this panel as a moderator and participant. Don and I actually work together to work at Green Line of Pottery, um, and I have worked there since 2019. I started my first year working for Green Line of Pottery. She is so crazy because I can't believe the business um, I am a P4 and we are five weeks in <laughs> Um, I, um, I love, uh, absolutely love URI. One of the things that I love so much about it is just the community. Oh, I'm good, Gabby. Cool, thanks. Um, so Gabby, let me know that my audio is breaking up a little bit. Okay, um, so I am a P4. So I graduation and very excited for it um, and John and I work together at Greenline Apothecary and I have just started my fourth year there um, and one of the things that I love so much about URI is its community um, and I think that it shows not only in this panel and how we have all of our alumni who are so willing to come back and talk to us um, but just in the community in the College of Pharmacy and how our professors are always there for us and how I feel so comfortable going and talking to professors as well as upper classmates, lower classmates, the friendships that I've formed with a lot of my own classmates. Um, and I think the community for URI Pharmacy is just so special and it's so unique to our program that we have here. Um, it's definitely more collaborative than it is competitive. And I think that that really fosters our ability to work with other professionals later on down the road. Um, so one of our first questions that we're gonna have today, and I'm going to pose it to our LTC, so our long-term care, um, and it's what does a typical work day look like for you guys? Okay, that's a loaded question because <laughs> every day can be different um, on the clinical side of long-term care. And that is um, the portion that I've worked since I graduated. I started as a consultant pharmacist 
Um, now my day to day looks a little different as I manage a group of uh, clinical pharmacists, but the day to day is, I'm sure, like everyone here, a little hectic. Um, core job responsibilities include getting to a different facility, center, rehab, pediatric facility, um, engaging with doctors, nurses, uh, patients, reviewing charts, leaving recommendations, being part of an interdisciplinary team, uh, dealing with emergencies, dealing with state and federal surveys. Uh, every single day is different. There is none like the last. Some are long, some are short. It's it's a lot. Um, it's a lot that can happen in a day on our end when we're uh, patient facing in a facility. Um, I would have to say to contrast um, Maura's day. So she's kind of more on the consulting side of long term care, and I work more on the dispensing side. So I actually work like in a physical pharmacy building. Um, so when I go to work, it's really about following up with nurses, calling the facilities that we um, service and checking in on our patients. Um, like I mentioned before, I work in the IV department. So a lot of what we're doing is um, therapy for um, antibiotics. So a lot of that involves call, calling to follow up and asking, can we continue on this medication, sending more doses, um, doing sterile compounding. Um, so I've really enjoyed doing that. And um, it definitely brings a unique clinical perspective as well. Um, you know, you're not just doing blister packing and sending um, medications on their way. You're really collaborating with um, the nurses and um, the doctors at these facilities. Great, thank you both so much. Um, you think about a really good point about how uh, collaboration and how teamwork is so important to us. And I think that's a great thing to ask both of our uh, pharmacy, um, both of our hospital pharmacy workers, um, how does teamwork play into your days and how important is teamwork in our everyday activities? So we're, you know, it really is all about the team in a hospital setting. And it's not just the pharmacy team, that's a big portion of it, but it's the nursing team, the physical therapy team, the medical team. You know, at, at South County, we have hospitalists, but I've been at teaching facilities where it's the medical interns and the medical residents as well. And, and those teams you work with, you know, we, we collaborate, we have interdisciplinary ICU rounds where you know, we would have dietary nursing, the intensivist all there, trying to figure out what the best course of therapy is for the patient. And then within the pharmacy, in hospital, you know, I'll echo what Morris said, no day is like the last. And, you know, there's a lot of different roles and functions in, in a hospital too. So, you know, the pharmacists that we have staffing the bench are working with a pharmacist who's doing med rec on all of our admissions, who's working with the physician, who's working with our infectious disease, uh, antimicrobial stewardship pharmacists. Uh, you know, we have an oncology pharmacist in our infusion center who is working with the oncologists up there and the staff pharmacists and the IV room technicians and our students. Uh, it, it really teamwork and collaboration are the name of the game in hospital and it feels like every day is more collaborative and there's more uh, more hands at the table trying to get patient care right than there was yesterday. I definitely agree and on a student end um, I've been training for a while but you know I do a lot of different things throughout the course of my shift so usually the way we break it up is um, some uh, of the interns will do compounding for the day so sterile compounding making IVs and others will, you know, pull regular pills and capsules and will fill the Pixis machines that are on the patient floors, like in, in ICUs and in different areas. Um, but throughout the day, while you're doing that, whether you're in one role or another, you know, you'll get called up to, um, I got called up to an OR the other day to, you know, fix an issue with the Pixis machine while they're in the middle of surgery. That was super cool. Um, also, you'll, you know, run up chemo to um, patients in our chemo floor if need be. So you're kind of getting pulled in all different different directions, but I love it because I feel like I'm learning new things every day and it's super, super collaborative. So if I, I'm someone who asks a ton of questions, like I said, I'm very young, I'm a P1. I still have a lot to learn. So like half the drugs I'm like, oh, I've never heard of that one before. What does that do? Cause I also work at um, just a no normal retail CVS and the drugs I deal with there versus at a hospital are very different. So it's been amazing to be exposed to so many different um, drugs and just receive help all around from everyone I work with. And so collaborative. Um, 
pharmacist doing as much as possible. So, oh, Gabby. <laughs> Can you hear me now, Gabby? Okay. <laughs> I swear, every time I type to you, then it fixes itself. So I'll just keep typing to you and don't worry about it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, um, so yeah, so a lot of our collaboration is not just with other health professionals, but also within our own profession as well. Um, so John, can you talk a little bit about, you know, what your typical workday is like, and then how does teamwork play into your job um, as a community pharmacist? Yeah, so out in the community, um, you know, perhaps retail pharmacy has a bit of a, a view that we just count pills. Um, but me and uh, Christina, my boss, we like to say that every pharmacist is a clinical pharmacist. Um, so typical day for me at Green Line involves processing um, refills for patients in the morning. Um, and also processing and, you know, doing your pharmacist thing on new incoming prescriptions for patients. Um, and being in the community is, you know, very people oriented. Um, so, you know, the concept is there's a sick person out there, they go see a doctor, um, they get some type of diagnosis, and then they come to the pharmacy to kind of complete their journey of like, this is what I need to do to start healing. So it's a really cool place to like sit in the chain of command as far as somebody's uh, healthcare journey goes. I love talking to everybody. I love hearing about their life. Um, listening skills are really used a lot <laughs> um, because I feel like, you know, listening and being there for someone is a really powerful medicine as well. So yeah, I really, really love my job. Lots of insurance billing, lots of experience or exposure to um, insurance plans and little nuances around, um, you know, coverage and explaining why a doctor can order a prescription, but insurance companies may not want to pay for it and the whole, all that stuff. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like a day to day. Um, I know my schedule and I know, um, you know, a certain volume that will be produced day to day, but as far as the people I'll see or the random prescriptions that will come in or whatever. Um, pharmacy is very dynamic. So my days are also not always the same. <laughs> um, and yeah, teamwork, um, teamwork is, you know, super important in any pharmacy field or any healthcare field because, um, you know, we want to shift away from the doctor said, this is, this is what the doctor's going to do. Um, because we all got, super, super amazing training um, at URI, our, our alma mater. Um, so, you know, whether you're in school now or on the other side, you know, there's a lot of value that we bring to the table as pharmacists. So um, in the community setting, I find that my store is a, you know, a trusted point of information sharing um, about, you know, drugs and prescribing and dosage forms and things like that. Um, and in particular, my store does a lot of business with hospice patients. Um, so we've kind of become a really good resource in my community for um, end of life care and hospice care. Um, so that's one place where like nurses will call and ask for recommendations about things every single day. Um, and we know all the providers there very well too. So that's where I would say teamwork comes in specifically. So John, I have to jump in, you know, from a, a Green Line neighbor over at South County, you know, uh -huh. Green Line Apothecary really embodies everything you want to see in a community pharmacy. And, you mm -hmm. know, talking about community pharmacists, practicing at, practicing at top of license, being trusted by the community. And, you know, we call on them at the hospital uh, to help us with issues when we have them with patients, when we have access problems, and, and they're always willing to collaborate with us. So you know, really a, a model operation from a, you know, what you dream of doing as a community pharmacist, you're, you're at the right place to do it. And any, you know, prospective folks down by URI, if you haven't swung by any of the Green Line Apothecary offices, there's one right in Wakefield, um, you know, get, pop in. That's, that's how it's supposed to be done. Thank you, Drew. That's so sweet. Um, yeah, we're so happy to be, you know, doing this, you know, for our little state, Rhode Island, but also, um, you know, Green Line does a lot, of, a lot of cool things like our Lyme disease program is going to start up again and we'll be the only pharmacies in the nation that 
um, can dispense prophylactic antibiotics for those who have suspected uh, Lyme disease exposure. So um, yeah, lots of innovative things happen down there. So if you don't want to go all the way up to Providence, yeah, the Wakefield store is like the Mecca of Green Line anyway. So that would be a great way um, to go check it out. I have to say oh, yeah. that doesn't have great milkshakes. Just wanted to add that. <laughs> yes! Gabby totally took my point, but she's right. We do have milkshakes. And I have to say it is one of my favorite perks of the job is our milkshakes. And I, my favorite is, um, it's a caramel ice cream with coffee as like your liquid. And so it's like a caramel coffee milkshake. It's so good. Um, but that is, <laughs> that is one of the really good perks about working for Greenland is our soda fountain. And we're so unique in that, that it's very much a community aspect that, yes, we're there for prescriptions and yes, we're there for any medical advice that you might need, but we're also there and we're fostering community relations. And to me that I absolutely love that. Um, and the sense of community that I've gotten working at Greenline as an intern um, for the last almost four years um, has truly just been like amazing to see the impact that we've been able to have on the community, um, but also the impact that the community has been able to have on me. It's really encouraged me to get involved um, in my local community of Wakefield and not just in the College of Pharmacy. So I do absolutely love Greenline for that. Um, and like John mentioned, we do do a lot of hospice care, but we also are really big into blister packing. Um, and so speaking with patients and having that interaction with patients and, you know, making their lives a little bit easier by making their medications a lot more straightforward is definitely something that I found very rewarding working in a community pharmacy. Um, and I'm sure that, like Stephanie can also um, speak to that as well and just like how appreciative patients can be and just the like relief on their face when it's something that it's one less worry that they have right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, my personal experience with Omnicare is um, a lot of what I'm calling on and dealing with is um, patients who are in some type of transitional care um, unit. So a lot of what they're getting is um, kind of like intense therapy, especially if they're getting IV antibiotics frequently. Um, so what we try to do is really make sure that we're getting the therapies out on time to the patients that, um, like, for example, when I work at night, it's whenever we get new orders, it's super important that, okay, did I send the drug? Did I send the IV pump for them? And um, do they have the supplies to start giving the drug right away? Um, so as long as those things go out at the end of the night, I'm happy because I know that it's going to get to the facility and the nurses are going to be able to start administering it right away. Um, just because you never know what's really going on. So, you know, these patients, they could have had a serious infection like sepsis, you know, a couple days ago, and they're still trying to recover from that. So just making sure that everything gets out and, um, you know, and as you're saying with the blister packing as well, like that is one less thing for patients to worry about and um, definitely makes it a lot easier too for um, the nursing staff and just kind of being able to collaborate with them and make it simpler because <laughs> it can be complicated. It definitely can. Anything to make things more simpler for our patients. We love it. Um, so I kind of want to switch like lanes here a little bit and talk about some further certifications and degrees um, that pharmacies can do because we as pharmacists, we can get board certified in a lot of different areas. We can also get multiple degrees. Um, a lot of our students that we um, have at URI are either getting another major in something else. Like myself, I got another, uh, I got a bachelor's in French, um, but we also have a lot of pharmacy students at URI who are doing our MBA program as well. Um, as well as various minors throughout the way. So if we want to start with Drew, because I know he did our MBA program, and then we're going to jump over to Maura as well. Um, but Drew, if you want to talk a little bit about our PharmD and MBA program. Yeah, absolutely. Caitlin, you're right. Uh, lots of pharmacy students, and this is a, you know, a great piece of advice for folks, look for additional certifications or degrees in areas that they're interested in, you know, to differentiate themselves as job applicants. But also just for professional fulfillment and, you know, for that additional challenge and trying to find, you know, new and exciting ways to challenge themselves. One of the ways that I did that, and I, I had a feeling I wanted to do this by the time I entered URI, uh, was with the dual PharmD MBA program. Uh, so the way that that works is basically once you reach 
you know, senior status you've had, I think it was at the time, your experience may vary, I'm old. Um, <laughs> once I had 120 credits, I could start, apply for the program and start taking MBA courses, uh, either night or online courses um, through the College of Business. And it was usually about one extra course a semester. And I would take, you know, a winter course or a, one or two courses over the summer as well to meet the commitment. And it was on top of pharmacy school and it admittedly was on top of working as well. So it felt like a lot, but again, the different opportunities and the different degrees that you go after it really should be because you're passionate about them and you're interested in it. As someone who likes numbers, I like math and I like the business side of things. I loved my MBA classes. It was like going to a, a room with a bunch of nerds like me who, you know, could talk about, you know, accounting and get excited about it or talk about, you know, operations and get excited about it. And so for me, it was really different than studying for a core exam. Uh, it was almost a refreshing change of pace. I, I never felt like it was more work. It was. In retrospect, it was a lot. But, you know, when I was sifting through it because I enjoyed it, it really didn't feel that way. It was it was a great program. And, and all the College of Business professors that I worked with at URI you know, lived up to the high expectations I had uh, from the College of Pharmacy professors. They, they're, it's a great group. Okay, I guess I'll jump in here. Um, I'm going to look at this from the other side of the coin. Uh, I believe the PharmD MBA program was in its infancy. So, Drew, if you're old, then I'm wicked old. <laughs> so, um, in its infancy and appealing at the time, but again, you're in pharmacy school, there's a lot going on. It's very overwhelming. Um, you're thinking, I'm getting my doctorate and uh, I'm going to proceed, and if there are, you know, wants and desires later, I can do that. And so I find myself there now, where I'm just about to finish my MBA, uh, about 12 years after I got my PharmD, and use this as an endorsement to explore those opportunities that you're presented uh, while you're at URI. You have them at your fingertips. Uh, one class extra semester might seem like a lot. Uh, it will pay dividends. You know, because and and I really liked um, and I think it was John that said this earlier, every every pharmacist is a clinical pharmacist. And while I wholeheartedly agree with that, I think that we also uh, need to realize that every pharmacy is run by um, not just pharmacists, but operational and business side um, folks as well. And if you differentiate yourself as one in the same, a clinician, and someone with uh, another advanced degree or, or another perspective, it only can help you in the long run. So I think it's a wonderful opportunity for anyone who's interested to at least explore um, because whether you do it, you know, when you do it then, it's always going to be easier with them when you do it later. So. I think you asked me, Caitlin, if I had anything to say. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, um, pharmacy is like inextricably tied to money. So it's just funny that this is uh, coming up, right? Drugs cost money. And um, being in the independent community setting, having a business savvy mind is definitely um, needed because uh, there's unfortunately a reason why there aren't so many around anymore. It's a lot, of it's a lot to compete with you know, the big names that uh, I will not be mentioning <laughs> after giving airspace to. Um, but yeah, uh, that's really all. I love, I love the business side of pharmacy too. I love, um, you know, every day I'm like, okay, this person's insurance plan is paying me X amount of dollars to fill this prescription. Um, how can I buy it cheaper? Where, what we use like five secondary, secondary wholesalers, which is also really unique like community pharmacy thing. Um, so yeah, we're always price shopping. We're always looking for, you know, yes, getting the med to the patient, but how do we make this a viable um, business? And uh, yeah, this is coming up now, so I'll say it now. Um, I think that pharmacy is a really unique profession where we do offer so many different things to the community. And yes, Greenline is so awesome because we have all these different bits and pieces of how we serve the community. Um, and we've differentiated our business model in such a way that it 
you know, it's really cool. It's really innovative and awesome. Um, but on the same token, the current structures of reimbursement from um, insurance payers are not really set up to support uh, to support that fully in the way that we need them to be. Um, so yeah, getting aware of the money in pharmacy is definitely um, important for sure. Personally, I've considered the MBA program for sure, but I have a lot of interests um, outside of business as well. And I really like that we have the opportunity to get involved in a lot of minors. So for me, I completed the bio minor, um, which meant I had to take ecology um, and some other biology courses. Uh, we have lots of minors, like over 90 minors you can get involved in. And for that, you only need to take 18 credits, which is just six classes, but a lot of them you already cover in courses that are required for the program. So I know one of my friends is doing a thanatology minor, which is something specific that we have for URI, and that's a death, dying, and bereavement um, topic. So that's something very interesting that's super applicable to pharmacy that you could do. So it's great knowing that you can get involved in a lot of different minors. Another thing I do is the honors program currently. A lot of those courses do overlap with pharmacy, like I took an honors biochemistry course and an honors writing course. But what I've really enjoyed about the honors program is I get to work with professors from all different disciplines. So one of my favorite classes was a senior seminar that I actually took as a sophomore just because I found it really interesting. Um, and it was on popular music criticisms. And I'm in my classes taking organic chemistry, biochemistry and like all this stuff. And then I'm talking about music and like really deep level theory. And it's just awesome to stimulate all those different parts of my brain. And really just, I, I thrive on learning new knowledge. Um, and it's great that we have all these opportunities that blend super nicely with the pharmacy program. So I've never felt like my opportunities have been limited. If anything, there's even more I wanna do. So whether it's honors, minors, majors, or you know doing the MBA program, there's a lot of things you can get involved in. Um, on a similar but kind of different note, um, and I know Caitlin can relate to this too, I actually studied abroad, um, so that kind of is similar to the minor situation where you think that you might not have the time or ability to fit it into your schedule, but um, at URI, pharmacy is one of the majors that has like the most people study abroad in it, um, so definitely that was an amazing opportunity that I had. Um, I could literally talk about it forever, <laughs> um, and you know, I got to do, I had the chance to do that before I entered my professional years. Um, so yeah, I had to take classes over the summer and kind of like cut my summer short, but I would take that just to have 12 weeks back in, um, it, Italy. There's a question in the chat. Where did you study abroad? So I studied in Florence, Italy. Um, I seriously loved it. It was my home away from home. Um, there was such a strong sense of community. So many of my friends, two of my roommates that I still live with right now, we all went together. Um, so yeah, just URI in general has great opportunities um, for study abroad and the pharmacy program really encourages it. So that was such a great thing to um, be able to take part in and definitely something that it sounds really cliche, but honestly, it was life changing. And I definitely think that it would, it will impact my future life and career, um, just being able to experience different cultures, different people. Um, and kind of exploring that independence as well. So I was really lucky to be able to do that. Oh my gosh, I lived in Florence and studied abroad there too. Yay! <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's seriously, it's seriously amazing. So if you have any um, desire to do that, it's super easy to do in pharmacy. And yeah, just seconding everything you said, because I would mm -hmm. never, never ever take that back. So um, yeah, it's worth taking or go over the summer. It is. Definitely. 100% <laughs> worth it. Most people, like especially all of our um, incoming students, as well as most of our probably freshmen through like P3s, because I think that might have been when I started talking about it. But my favorite thing I've done is study abroad. Um, and I had two very unique opportunities to study abroad during my time here at uh, College of Pharmacy is that I did study abroad um, my sophomore year, just like Stephanie did, and I did a program called Semester at Sea. So for those of you that are familiar with the show, The Sweet Life on Deck, um, like from The Sweet Life of Zachary and Cody, that's what I did. I lived on a boat and I sailed around the world for three and a half months and took classes on a ship um, and did a lot of traveling. Um, and it was the best experience of my life. <laughs> I loved it. I um, 
still talk about it. In fact, I go to all of our study abroad um, like talks that we have for students because I love encouraging people to study abroad, whether they do the program that I did or any other program. Um, but I also had another unique experience during my College of Pharmacy time and that I was able to do two rotations in France. Um, and so I did those during the fall semester. So I left uh, the last week in August and then I came back at the beginning of December. So I did two rotations in France. They were both my electives. Um, and one was at a hospital in France and then the other one was at a clinical trial company as well. And they were both very different from each other, but both very educational. Um, and that is something that was very unique about URI that drew me to the program and especially to this program um, was the opportunity to do two of my rotations in France. Um, and as I mentioned, I did get a degree in French, um, but I am also fluent in French. I've been seeking it since I was eight years old. So the ability to combine my love of languages as well as my love of pharmacy and do my rotations overseas was just such a unique experience for me. Um, and I also love talking about that one. <laughs> Um, so if anyone does have any questions relating to study abroad um, or rotations abroad, we can definitely answer those for you. Um, but I think this is okay. a great way. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I just I will add to the opportunities that you talk about with URI and a unique one that I was able to do as well. I don't I don't have a second language that I'm fluent in, um, but. <laughs> URI and the reputation and just where it is in Rhode Island, um, I was able to connect, Denise connected me with an organization from Brown um, that I then formed a, a relationship with and went on medical brigade to Honduras with for years following my graduation. So it's not just your study abroad either. I mean, you have very unique opportunities that present themselves to the College of Pharmacy, which are passed on to pharmacy students. So it, it really is um, so versatile. So true. Um, I did a mission trip that reminded me, I like forgot, uh, to Ecuador <laughs> with a professor, my P4 year. Um, yeah, which I never ever thought that, uh, I would do. Um, but to be able to bring, you know, our patient care to a place that has never, it doesn't have that, um, is really, really awesome and really fulfilling. So yeah, study abroad isn't a thing, you will you could travel some way somehow at URI if you want to. Lots of travel bugs here. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I, I'm a bit of a homebody, and if there's anybody out there, you know, participating like me, you can also not travel. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that'll be okay, too. Yes, it is definitely okay if you feel like you are definitely a homebody, um, but we do just have so many unique experiences and there is my favorite phrase and Dr. Estes loves to tease me about it, but my favorite phrase is that there is something for everybody at URI, whether you're interested in travel pharmacy and traveling around um, and doing pharmacy, things like that, whether you're interested in hospital pharmacy, community pharmacy, long-term care, um, veterinary pharmacy, pediatrics, geriatrics. So we have so many different organizations at URI that are so helpful in facilitating um, the development of any of those um, sectors of pharmacy that you're interested in. Um, definitely uh, for me, myself, I'm very interested in pediatric pharmacy. So being able to be a member of our pharmacy organization for the pediatric um, population has definitely been really good for me. And it's also helped me to make a lot of um, connections and do a lot of networking. Um, it's also how I was able to do a research project with one of our pediatric professors. Um, so there's so many opportunities at URI. Um, one of my favorite questions to ask a lot of our um, already graduated and our practicing pharmacists is how did URI help prepare you for your role? Um, so I'm going to ask that to the pharmacist, but then for my students, I'm going to have you guys answer, how does working while you're in school help you with school? So what are the benefits that you found um, of having a pharmacy job? So we're going to start back with Maura and do Maura, Stephanie, and then Drew and continue on our way. So, Okay, well, this is an easy one. Um, I did not know much about long-term care uh, or geriatric pharmacy until my elective with Dr. Estes at URI. So that really um, introduced me to this sort of profession. I fell in love with it and 
was able to uh, leverage and network relationships through URI, which landed me my job as a consultant pharmacist. So um, it literally not just prepared me, but you know, facilitated my employment after graduation, which was which was wonderful. And it introduced me to a world that I really didn't know exist, existed. Um, geriatric pharmacy, I find to be one of the um, most interesting, acute, involved, complex um, sections that we that we can provide care for. So I really loved it. And it really URI catapulted me to where I am now. Um, so for the student perspective on this, so I started working at Omnicare when I was a P1. Um, so that would have been my first professional year. And um, like I've been saying, I mainly work in the IV department. So we do a lot of IV antibiotics. Um, so this would be prior to me learning about any of them in school um, or having any like real technical experience doing um, sterile compounding. So um, definitely being able to see all those drugs um, ahead of time and know the names of them and stuff because they're not common things that you see every single day. Um, and in fact, a lot of them are IV only. So um, definitely having exposure to that and kind of um, where you would use the um, certain antibiotics. And then another thing that I think was really unique about this position for me is um, this is kind of like weird to explain to people sometimes at first, but basically at Omnicare for the, um, for the IV department at night, there's no pharmacist who's there specifically taking care of the IV medication. So there's pharmacists in the building who are verifying orders and, you know, answering phone calls and questions, making recommendations. But in the actual department, it's, it's usually just either an intern or a technician who's kind of answering the phones, getting everything done um, for the night, and then everything gets checked by a pharmacist at the end. So um, when I'm there at night working, I'm actually kind of working by myself. There's people I can talk to and um, I can always go to a pharmacist if I have questions, but just kind of having that, um, like my own autonomy right there really taught me a lot of um, about responsibility and time management because I have to get things out the door by a certain time um, and it's kind of all on my shoulders. So I'm sure some of the pharmacists will agree in, um, in this, but when you when you become a pharmacist, or a lot of what they're preparing for us now is for when you are the singular person that people go to for questions about stuff, like what are you going to do with your clinical judgment? Um, how are you going to answer questions? All those things. And I have people to rely on if I need help, but it really taught me a lot of independence and um, being able to kind of use those skills to um, make decisions. And I always go back and I ask the pharmacist too, but it's kind of nice to say, oh, you know, I was thinking this, like, is that right? And then they say, yeah. And it's, I say, okay, I'm going to go call them and tell them. So um, I really got to learn a lot about that. So that was really unique for me and definitely um, helps build my confidence with my like clinical knowledge. So I'll jump in. Um, see, I think this question is a little bit hard. Uh, because there's so many different ways I can go. You know, I, I could say I didn't know anything about drugs really, except that I took Tylenol sometimes before I started at URI and now I know much more. Um, but, you know, the foundational knowledge, the information about medications, the MBA, you know, the business knowledge that I got, of course, those are foundational to what I do as a pharmacy leader. But the biggest differentiator, the biggest thing that I got from URI, I think that you know separated me from peers from other places was being able to not just know the facts, but be able to apply them. Being able to look at scientific articles and form your own opinion about them, not just what the author wants you to think, but to be able to you know dissect those. And being able to look at a really complex patient case where there isn't an answer that's the one correct answer. There's a lot of answers and you have to find out which one is going to be the best for your patient and make a judgment call. And I find in precepting students or seeing students rotate through from other places, there's a lot of trouble with that ambiguity and with those journal club conversations sometimes. It's never a problem with URI students. It wasn't a problem with, for me. And so, you know, really applying that foundational knowledge, you could get that anywhere, but you know, that, those critical thinking skills really come from URI. And I'll double down on what uh, Maura said. I also ended up getting my first job out of school 
leveraging contacts that I made on rotation uh, with with a professor and then another preceptor. They called me up on the phone and said, "Hey, we work at the same place now. How how would you like to come be with us?" So I uh, it, there's and I could go on, but I won't. I'll I'll let Gabby take the take the mic. <laughs> Yeah, to echo what Drew is saying, networking connections is huge at URI. I was lucky enough to have Dr. Estes as my URI 101 professor, which is a course you take your first year. Um, and I, I joined ASCP, which is a consultant pharmacy club that she runs. And I've loved everything I've learned there. But she helped me get a job at CVS as a sophomore. So I was able to start getting pharmacy experience at that time because she knew the pharmacist who worked there. And I'm also in another club called SSHP. And I'll be the president elect next year for our student chapter. And our advisor, Dr. Charpentier, works at South County Hospital. And that's how she connected me um, to Drew and the position there. So definitely you know, being exposed to so many amazing professors who really just want to be your mentor and help see you grow has been absolutely amazing. And I wouldn't be the person I am without all of those amazing professors. But specifically working at South County Hospital, I've known for a long time that, you know, the idea and the thought of hospital pharmacy is something, you know, I've always been interested in, but actually working there and seeing the workflow and it really, it obviously it's not like Grey's Anatomy and everything like that, you know, but um it's really great for me seeing how it is because we'll be doing cases in class or we were doing um, a DI console about, you know, there was an adverse drug event in class and all of that. And the drugs that we're using are things that I've only seen in the hospital and the experiences that I'm seeing happening between a team is stuff that I see in the hospital. Um, and it really puts a lot of things into perspective. Obviously I'm very early in, um, you know, learning my clinical knowledge. So as it grows, I feel like what I'm taking away from the hospital job is even greater. Um, and it's great also working with older students and seeing what they've learned. There's another P4 named Caitlin who works at um, South County. And anytime I work with her, she just, she teaches me so much. And she tells me like she's how she's learned so much there. And it's just, it's really inspiring and exciting to see. Um, but it also puts into perspective a lot of the things we learn in our pharmacy law class, especially in regards to compounding and the seriousness of um, everything you do, whether it be in an intern level or a pharmacist level, and how we all impact patient care. So definitely putting everything into perspective, making everything a lot more real is, is something that's been really amazing about working at the hospital. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so yeah, URI is it's a great program. Um, it sounds like everyone got their job from a professor that they knew. Um, Dr. Estes actually introduced me to Christina, the owner of Greenline, and after our first conversation in the hallway, um, I like volunteered to make essential oil putties with like accepted students or something. And Christina walks by and Dr. Estes was like, oh, you guys should talk. Um, and by the end of the convo, Christina was like, yeah, you should send me your resume. Um, and now, you know, here I am. Um, so yeah, the connections are, um, are there. Um, and also the faculty are so amazing. Um, I think I was closer friends with the teachers by the end of pharmacy school than my classmates. Um, I kept a very small group of people my age and I was more friendly with the, with the teachers. Um, but they really, they are really good at seeing, um, what you're good at and your passion and giving you, um, the soil to kind of plant that in and a place to start applying that and getting your feet wet in pharmacy. Um, so I definitely felt well prepared, um, you know, to go get a real big boy job, but also, you know, the knowledge that we gained and all the, the stuff that you have to know to be a pharmacist, um, you are pretty good at that too. Um, so yeah, I felt well, well prepared. <laughs> Um, I agree with John. Um, definitely one of the things that I've learned working in community pharmacy, um, and I know it sounds very simple, but learning brand versus generic of medications. To me, working in the community and having someone call in and say, I'm looking for my Flexero. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> and so like having to look it up and having to learn, oh, like that's what that medication is. And so actually like not only just learning medications and working with them. Um, and I started working in a pharmacy um, before Greenline. I know I, I, I worked before Greenline in a different- um, yeah, I'm like you worked everywhere. Pharmacy. 
I know I work everywhere. I also work at a hospital. I work at Newport Hospital um, in Rhode Island. So I'm just very active. Um, but I worked at a different pharmacy and I worked as it before I'd even started pharmacy school. So I didn't really know a lot about medications other than like Tylenol and ibuprofen, which I would take if I have a headache. Um, so being in that environment and talking to people about their medications and, you know, watching pharmacists and learning from pharmacists and learning from older students um, about what different medications are, what they're used for, um, how to counsel on prescriptions. And I love watching other pharmacists and, you know, learning from them. So being able to watch John when I was, you know, a P2 student um, <laughs> and seeing how, you know, the pharmacists that I admire and the pharmacists that I look up to, how they treat patients and how they counsel patients um, is just really one of the things that I like about working as a student. And I think that that's really affected how I am, um, while I'm on rotations and, um, treating all of my patients with kindness and treating them like they're a person and that they're here and they're not just a chart number and they're not just a patient to be checked out and sent along the way that they're here and they have questions, um, and being open and really understanding like what, the, you know, is the root cause of their problem or what's their root question. Um, and so that is one of my favorite things um, about working in community and just really has been so beneficial for my studies. Because um, it's really important to know <laughs> what your brand and generic names are. It's just something that we get tested on. Um, that's something that we get tested on. We have the dreaded drug quizzes. And so in lab, being all my students, we all smiled. Um, but in lab, you have drug quizzes and where you're given a set of drugs and you have to know their brand and generic name. You have to know their indication. You need to know, you know, maximum and minimum doses um, as well as any potential side effects for the medications. And it's something that we're tested on because that's the root of what we're learning. Um, so definitely, I love that. And I love talking to people, um, which is why I was picked for the panel. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just like the ability to talk to people and learning those soft skills and learning how to talk to different people who are in different stages of lives or are in different moods. Um, moods are always a really important thing. Um, so as we are kind of winding down, this is my favorite question. And I ask this to everybody that I'm on a panel with or that I interview for all of our um, like pharmacist interviews. And this is, what is your advice for either incoming pharmacy students or students who are currently in pharmacy school. So I see a couple of you guys on here. Um, so we'll start with Maura, but what is your advice for pharmacy students? Okay, um, advice for pharmacy students, either incoming or present, is um, really find what you like to do. Explore all your options, take all the testers that you get, put out all the feelers, uh, and find something that you're passionate about because it makes your job less of a job and more of a passion, more of a, um, a journey, a life fulfillment. And at the end of the day, you will come out of URI with so much knowledge. Uh, you will have a foundation that you can, like Drew said, apply, which is really unique. There are a lot of pharmacy schools out there right now, and I'm sure all of us that have been working have um, or can attest to, uh, URI students are just a little bit different. So you have the skill set, you have the foundation. If you don't like what you're doing, you do yourself a disservice and, you know, potentially your patients. So just try it all out. Even if you think you know what you want to do, try something out of your comfort zone and, and, and be passionate about it. That's how you'll set yourself up to be successful for the next 30, 40 years you have to work. Um, so my advice, so just coming from like a current student perspective, I always like to say, have fun and remember to have fun. Um, because <laughs> um, a lot of the times we just associate pharmacy school with um, intense rigor and the academics of it. But a lot of what you're doing, you just have to remember to be yourself and just remember to remain centered in the moment um, because you'll always remember those really fun memories of, you know, doing activities like this instead of nights that you were studying. And the studying is very important and it does go a long way in furthering and bettering yourself. But, you know, only thinking about that and having a one-sided approach 
um, it doesn't really help. <laughs> so um, I definitely like recommending, remember to have fun, remember to be in the moment with your peers and um, friends, family, all of that. Stephanie, that's a really good point. The best pharmacies, whatever the location, long-term care community hospital are built with pharmacists, pharmacy technicians, pharmacy interns, not pharmacy robots. So yes, you know, it, it, there is more to life. I think my advice would be get involved in things, try things out, you know, early, you know, join one or two of the organizations of the stuff that interest you. I was a bit of a late bloomer in that regard. I'll be honest. I, I look back and wish that I had been involved in more things when I was at URI uh, than I was. And now I've been the treasurer of the Rhode Island Society of Health Systems Pharmacists for four or five years now. And I wish that my experience had been a little bit more like Gabby's as a student because she's involved in everything. Um, I, I encourage you to put yourself out there and, and don't worry about don't shy away from things because you're afraid you're going to get burned out. If you start to feel it, back off, but dive in. It, it will really pay off and it will really increase your fulfillment and your engagement with everything you do. Yeah, Drew kind of stole what I was going to say, but I'll definitely lean into that a little bit. Um, this is my third year at the University of Rhode Island. And since day one, I have really just hit the ground running and tried and got involved in pretty much anything I'm interested in. Um, I was always very involved in high school, but I think coming to college and seeing that we have over 300 clubs and organizations and are over 30 specific pharmacy organizations and all different things you could join on campus, I was like, wow, how can I do it all? So I've done intramural soccer, volleyball. I'm a tour guide. I've worked in retail pharmacy, hospital pharmacy. I'm in lots of pharmacy clubs, do also lots of not pharmacy things. And my experience would not have been the same without it, especially being a tour guide. I've met so many people outside of my major, which has truly been amazing. I've met so many um, awesome prospective students as well. That's why I love doing events like this. But genuinely, I know some people get scared because they're like, oh, like the workload or this or that. I, in my opinion, I feel like all of us will always feel like you could always study more, right? But at a certain point, you need to say, you know, there are other things that enhance your learning outside of just, you know, the classroom aspect. Obviously it's a huge portion, but I feel like, you know, when my club SSHP does clinical skills nights or residency panels, you know, when I get to go and, and practice taking blood pressure, practice doing OSCEs, which is where you like work with a patient scenario. Those are the things that enhance my learning so much more. So I really say just go out there and try everything. I think I went to 10 different pharmacy club meetings my freshman year and then picked the, the three or four that I liked. So it's, it's okay. No one's gonna get offended if you go to their club and then you don't show up. I say just try everything because it's really gonna make the biggest difference in your you know, entire URI career. Thanks, Gabby. Um, so yeah, biggest advice for current and prospective students, um, yeah, gonna echo what Maura said, and a lot of us have said, <laughs> um, you have to be yourself, um, you, you know, you're in this big piece of pay, place of like, I need to decide what I'm gonna do with my life, um, and that's way too much pressure to like put on yourself, so um, yes, have fun along the way. Yes, find your passions. Um, if you, you know, magnetize yourself to what you like, um, you will bring exactly what you need and all the places that you're supposed to end up to you. Um, so yes, echoing that. I will also add, um, you need to learn stress management <laughs> in some form. Um, as a pharmacy student, as an adult practicing pharmacist, um, you know, get connected with your breath in some way. Um, if you were at URI around my time, you know that um, I was really passionate about bringing mindfulness and yoga and meditation to the students and faculty because, um, yeah, there's plenty of stress to be had and there will be days where you're overwhelmed um, and knowing how to navigate and regulate your own nervous system is not something that's really formally taught to us as humans out on earth. So recommending looking into that for um, personal development reasons. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, my like one-liner for advice is that you are a human being, not a human doing. So when your to-do list gets long, 
um, just remember that you are you are you and there's way more um, all of the things on the list will pass time will go on um, and you'll still be you at the end of the day so invest in that as well John is the best. Every time I work with him, I always feel so calm afterwards. <laughs> John is just a very calming presence and I am always a bundle of stress. <laughs> so John is always a calming presence, but he has a very good point. Um, my advice for future students is to just take advantage of all of the different um, all of the different opportunities that we have, not only at the URI College of Pharmacy, but also at Gabby said like, a lot of pharmacy students, we are very involved and we're very involved in things, not just in pharmacy school. I, um, I, as a pharmacy student in my freshman and sophomore year, I worked with the mascot program. And so I didn't really, you know, do very pharmacy involved things. I was part of uh, Greek life and I did the mascot program. And once upon a time, I was Rody the Ram. Um, so it's just definitely something that just very different experiences and there's something out there for everyone. I see this phrase is coming back. It's my hands it should be my catchphrase. Um, but definitely just make sure that you're making the most of your experience um, and getting out there and meeting people and doing things um, and just really making sure that you're having an experience that uh, you're enjoying and that it's you're doing things that you know bring you happiness. Um, but yeah, so that is the end of our panel. And I wanna thank everybody so much for attending as well as our fellow panelists. Um, it was so great to hear about all of your different experiences. Um, students, I know you guys have exams tomorrow. So <laughs> thank you so much for taking time out of your night to be here. Um, but if anyone does have any further questions, all of our um, students, I know that both Dr. Estes um, as well as myself have put our emails in the chat. So please feel free to reach out if you do have any further questions. Um, and I reach, wish everyone the best of luck with their college search. So thank you so much.